Hello and welcome along to this week's episode of The Three Skirrows. My name is JJ. And my name is David. And unfortunately, Isaac is not with us again this time around because he's off doing his holidays or whatever. But however, we have someone very, very special on instead. We have the lovely, charismatic, the Irish wonder, James Murphy, who is the proud owner of St. Luja, a very fancy cocktail bar in St. Kilda. Hello, James. Welcome to the show, mate. Hello, JJ. Hello, David. Thank you so much for having me on. Like, I'm delighted to be on. I, I think I'm one of your biggest fans. Has anyone ever said that before? <laughs> uh, only, only, only my mom. My yeah, mom. mom's and that's it. Yeah. So at least she's like, at least he's doing something with his life and not drugs. <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Well, welcome along, mate. As uh, you and I have probably met each other, as uh, we were saying before, we started recording face to face somewhere along the lines in the last couple of years in St Kilda. But uh, it's uh, nice to actually to to meet you formally, and yeah, we're having, going to have a, a good chat about everything that's going on with you, everything that's going on with the city opening back up uh, very very soon. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully we have a, you know, we we discover a little bit more about what it's like to to run a bar. Yeah, exciting time well, to be alive it is a very exciting time to be alive i'm a fountain of knowledge of very little useful information <laughs> that's why you're perfect <laughs> for the show because we're exactly the same uh, but before we go any further uh what we have to do is uh you know do our usual stuff and uh play your theme tune so here you go And we're back, and we didn't even see Trin live that time, but we did still do the dance. <laughs> there were some moves you've got there. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, uh, we need to call out that dance move. Famous. That's it. Well, well, listen, I think you've got the skills. Those were some moves. Absolutely. They were. Um, that thing you did with your ankle, didn't even know it could bend that way. <laughs> I so usually usually at this point in the podcast, what we do is we say what drink we've got to bring on the podcast, but we're doing things a little bit differently this week, as Dave has sprung upon me uh, roughly twenty five minutes ago. Dave, would you like to explain what we're going to do? So, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are listening, as I may have mentioned before, uh, James is the proud owner of St. Luger, a cocktail bar. But not only is he just the proud owner of a lovely cocktail bar, he's actually quite talented with cocktails himself. So, James, someone of your expert who's very knowledgeable about cocktails, we thought, well, I thought, JJ just got told he was doing it, uh -huh. um, that... We would make a cocktail for you. Now, it's a bit hard because we're not in the same place. So we're probably going to have to just describe it to you, have a sip of it, and then you'll have to kind of gauge our reactions and then you can tell us who's won. So um, being prepared as we are, uh, literally, I went to the fridge and found whatever I can. So um, here we go, mate. I'm, I think I'll kick it off because it was my idea. So what, I, what I've got for you today is um, Dead Man's Fingers, which is a lovely spiced rum. It's one of my favourite rums. I keep it in the house. It's actually made in Cornwall. It's good and to keep it in the house. That's the big, is, big thing. Don't uh, keep it anywhere else. House, house is a central. My, yeah. my glass, it's got two ice cubes there, but they're already melting pretty quick because we're in tropical Queensland. Water. Uh, yeah. And then we have got a, a Powerade where I've only actually, <laughs> I've only actually drank... Um, not even a third of it because I was that hungover the other day. I got a Powerade to help me out. And then I was that hungover. I couldn't even finish it. So this is a, a, a it's probably had three swigs out of it. And then as with all cocktails, we have garnish. So I've just found some Sour Patch Kid gummy things. So what I call this one is I call this uh, um, because it's Dead Man's Fingers. So they're for Roman, healthy serve spin it around a little bit of the water mix as well and then a powerade in it red powerade berry ice powerade if listening would like to sponsor um and then and then a the garnish here bombs away and i call that because it's dead man fingers and powerade i call it power fingers i knew that's what you were that's going for I knew you were going to say that as well. Yeah. Power fingers. Uh, there you go. I love it. 
Do you know what? I'd pay good money for that. I would pay. I would pay. It's terrible. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> So how, no, what, I got to drink it that. Oh, yeah, you got to drink fuck. that now. That's that's your own fault. Yeah. You've done this to yourself. Um, <laughs> I'll I'll close it. We'll let we'll let the the pro go last. Um, so as as we we'd stated, uh, I did just get this sprung upon me, <laughs> and I'm I'm sorry for what everyone's about to witness. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt my my camera down so you can see my keyboard and and the mess over in the corner over there for those that actually watch this. Hi, Dave's dad. And uh, this is what we're going to we're going to we're going to make, okay? So I've went I've went down the Dave route. I've got myself some some rum. Um, the reason I got the rum is it's the only thing I had in my house. So that's the thinking behind it. I hope you all enjoy that. Um, I don't really know really how to do measures, so that seems about yeah, right. Probably that looks like a standard drink. Yeah, yeah, that looks <laughs> this will be fine. Um, the thing For an is, alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> it smells fucking great, I'll be honest. The thing is, though, I didn't really have anything else at all to mix it with. So remember back home, boys, because we're not from this fine country, but we, we do know of a certain children's drink back home by the name of Capri Sun. Okay? <laughs> but I found it here under the name Amigos. Just so you know... <laughs> Just so you know, in Woolworths, they sell these and they are very cheap and they're the exact same drink. This is the tropical one that you get back home. So all I'm going to do is uh, this for a while. I know this is some real good entertainment. Oh, right. look at that. Look at look. that. We should play sexy music to this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> da, na, 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 this, like careless whisper. For anyone not watching, this looks like uh, what you would imagine, like a... Maybe a hamster pissing itself looks like it is not. It doesn't look right. I it doesn't lie. look good. I've um, had vomit. That looks very similar. I think to I've, it. I've just about got. To, oh, listen to that. Oh, that's some good ASMR. I don't know if you can hear that there, guys. But oh, do you what? I'm actually really disappointed because, like, I don't know if you know, but JJ has cerebral palsy, so his left hand is incredibly strong. And like, so he wins at every game of like peanuts or mercy, he'll literally crush a man's hand. And it took you forever to empty that cap of song. Shut <laughs> I've now got to put my garnish on it. <laughs> so, what I've done is I've got a birthday hat <laughs> and I've just stuck it on top there. It's like a little T Rex oh. as well. That's lovely. Um, I've, I'm calling this um, age 21 years and one day this is the day after your 21st birthday and this is the hangover drink that you have after it hence the the birthday hat now a man with two hands two working hands would drink through the little hole that's at the top here because it would create a funnel but i don't have that and it would go everywhere so instead i'm just going to drink it like this i'll let you know how it goes definitely wasn't a standard amount of rum i put in there <laughs> Not the worst, though. Not the worst. I've definitely drank worse shit than that. Okay. okay. That, that's called t your day after your 21st birthday. Okay, James, what you got for me? Hell, my men to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> some say, some say so, we're experts. <laughs> I just, I'm trying to like get good at TikTok. So can you imagine I clap my hands and then we freeze for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great to rock. Wow. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. He is that good at cocktails. He claps his hands and, and they come together. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> My assistant made this. Um, believe it or not, so I, um, the torch has been passed back and forth between Sarah and I. So Sarah is my fiance and Sarah is actually one of the first people to teach me how to make a drink eight years ago. Near, no, sorry, nearly nine years ago. Nine years ago this November. And God damn, that's good. God what, is, damn. What, is, what is in your magical so, creation? So this creation here is, like you guys, it's just two ingredients, except for the ice. The ice is technically an ingredient in the world of cocktails. But it is cookie tin, tinato. Tinato. So basically, it is an aromatized wine, like 
not a vermouth, but like kind of a, like similar to a vermouth. If you've ever seen like Cinzano or Antica Formula, all those sort of things. And then it's soda water. So it's just two ingredients, but it, then that goes into the category of a spritz. I decided to make a spritz for this show because I thought you boys would be drinking beers and I didn't want to be drinking old fashions at the same rate you guys are drinking beers because yeah. I'd be uh, yeah I'd be two sheets in the wind <laughs> but essentially what you do with this is you put in 90 ml of your aromatized wine put your ice in then fill up with soda water and then garnish with whatever you like I, we've done a nice orange wedge and you just sip on it. It's so it's easy. A, it's, it's quite a big ice cube you've got there going on as yeah, well. That's, that's professional. Uh, Not like yeah. my dwindling bits of water. Uh, <laughs> well, cheers, guys. That cheers. Was, that was I great. think um, at least someone would have learned how to make a cocktail out there, courtesy mm-hmm. of James. Uh, if you wanted to learn how to make people disappointed, watch us every week. <laughs> well, very good at it. very good at it. so out of your opinion james yeah if you had to pick one of the t- three schooners there's only two of us at the minute um who would it who would go for you know i'm well, not not leading not biased or anything but yeah we have known each other for quite a while <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a tough one because um it's not really they... though is it <laughs> Dave, Dave, you've you've hit on a few uh, heartstrings. I actually made a cocktail years ago. There's an actual cocktail called the Sonic, which is uh, lemon juice, kettle one citron, and you use blue Powerade. Oh, oh yeah, and oh. It's called the Sonic. So I had this idea when I, the first place I ever worked in here in Australia, actually the first bar I ever worked in in hospitality, I was just like, how about because you've got you've got a blue, you've got a red. And you've got a, an orange. Oh, you can be called them. Yeah. So why don't we not do Sonic Knuckles and Tails? Fuck, oh, my dude. God. Yeah. So we put it up on the board. We actually got a guy in, like a professional chalkboard artist. And he's on this fucking awesome like mural on the wall and all that sort of stuff. Guess how many we sold? <laughs> Was it like two? Two. <laughs> 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 do, you remember, do you remember venoms did you have venoms back home and that was um orange juice um southern comfort and blue wkds jesus man, yeah they, that sounds tasty that was that was great there man. was there was a bar i used to go to when uh, i was just bright eyed and new to the world of going out and drinking uh because i had nef- definitely had a drank in parks in the freezing cold with white lightning cider before that but Made in from liverpool, onions. <laughs> yeah in liverpool there used to be a club uh, i won't say the name just in case they get into trouble but um you go in and it's like where all the uni students go and they would serve quad vods but they wouldn't come legally serve you the alcohol so they'd serve you two double vodkas and then you'd have to pour it into one, and then they give you a, a can of Red Bull, and it was like four pound. Oh, that's literally how you started your night, and you had to just survive after that. Four pounds for four uh, shots of vodka. The, the worst, the worst place I've ever been for that is Newcastle. You get three triple vodkas for five quid. <laughs> Nine <laughs> shots of vodka for a fiver. Jesus Christ Almighty! Outrageous. Mm. Anyway, you... let's let's get on to to James. Yes. So James, yes. cocktail master, renegade master. How renegade how master. how did you how did you get into it, mate? You are you now are a proud owner of a bar, and not any bar, a very bloody good bar um, in St Kilda. That looks out right on the Esplanade. Very beautiful sunset at your venue. But um, how did you get there, mate? How did it start? Yeah, well, so the start is I'm a plumber by trade, and uh, I started my plumbing apprenticeship during the recession of 2007. Can you believe that that is Bloody hell. quite a while ago? More now. than a decade ago, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus, 14 years ago, more, and um, no, I'm sorry, I feel old now, yes, yes. Um, so. 
uh, I finished my apprenticeship and uh, the director of the company was like, so you know what happens is you finish your apprenticeship, your rates go up too high, we have to let you go, we have to break your service. He goes, go to Australia or go to Canada. That's my advice to you. So I was like, cool. Never thought about traveling. So I had to think about it for about two days and my neighbor was here in Melbourne. So I came over to Melbourne, but on my way, before I came over to Melbourne, one of my other neighbors who was an electrician was out in Melbourne the year beforehand. And he was just like, he was the same as me. We went straight from school to doing an apprenticeship and he goes, do yourself a favor he goes you need to work on hospitality for at least a year because it is the most fun you'll ever have in your life so I was like all right cool cool so I came over to Australia came to Melbourne met up with my mate went to a place called Ludlow which is on the South Bank where my uh, good mate and neighbor Russell worked so I walked in I'd been I'd been here um, about three weeks I walked in and the venue manager at the time was like Hey, how are you? You're Russell's mate. Yeah, we've been waiting like three weeks for you. Like, yeah, you could you you're, you have a trial tomorrow. And I walked in on my birthday and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, shit, so I'm not gonna be able to go out tonight and like enjoy myself <laughs> too much. So um so I spent my birthday walking around the living room in South Yarrow learning how to carry three plates. <laughs> <laughs> and uh went in the next day and uh, the voice from my neighbor Russell was like, All you have to do is smile and flirt with every girl you see. And I was like, Okay, I'll try to do that. I'll try to do that. <laughs> Look at my free plate. Look at <laughs> <laughs> I have been perfecting that. Might not be good at three plates, but I'm good at four plates. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in, I done the trial. Uh, a few people I think were sus and they sort of had me figured out sort of straight away. And um, I was just like, I'll, I'll just keep, I'll just keep running with this one. And um, they were like, yeah, cool. Like I was like, I was very, I was very charming with some people that came through the door and uh, they were like, yeah, cool. You can come back. I was like, grand. And then one of my favorite things about that was the first table I served, there was this guy and he looked at me and I'm just going to put this light on because you need to see the um, the face that he gave me. Like he was just like, just this guy trying <laughs> to impress everyone. And he was just like, I'll have a Pinot Noir. <laughs> I was like, and I'm there writing that down going I have no fucking idea what that is <laughs> I put you a Pinot Grigio for anyone who doesn't know wines because I don't want to be arrogant I, I am that uh, person I'm that person I don't know anything yeah. about so, them so Pinot Noir is a red wine Pinot Grigio is a white wine so they're the opposite ends of the spectrum so I put you a Pinot Grigio but I got everything else right on the table and uh, the supervisor comes over to me and goes oh James just so you know uh he asked for a Pinot Noir, not a Pinot Grigio. And I was like, oh, I could have sworn he said Pinot Grigio. <laughs> like, I'm, well, I have no fucking clue what that is. <laughs> and then, um, so this was in November of uh, 2012. And then basically what happened was that New Year's Eve, a bartender called in sick for New Year's Eve. And if anyone knows hospitality, New Year's Eve is like the Super Bowl. Yeah. And uh the bar manager turned around and goes, you're working the bar tonight. And I was like, yeah, yeah, awesome. I'll do it. Like, I'll do it. And then the first drink that got ordered was a Jackson and Coke. And I was like, what the fuck is a Jackson and Coke? Like, the hell is this getting harder and harder? I've been drinking all my life. It's just not getting easier. <laughs> so a Jackson and Coke was a Jack Daniels and Coke. And I was like, oh, I killed. But that was the night. And then basically the, uh, the turning point was that night. There's this guy set up and he's doing the cocktails. And he's got this ticket machine beside him. And this machine is just going. So he's got these tickets coming in like out of his arse. And he's just smashing out these drinks. And I was looking at him going, fuck, I will never be able to do that. And little did I know then the following year when they were doing the run sheet for the day. And they're like, all right, cool. So, um blah 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 you're doing bar one you're doing bar three james you're on cocktails tonight and i was like and and what did we see what venue this was already this was yeah. this was Lud ludlow mm. on south bank so okay. it was it's owned by... a, yeah, it's literally literally i can see it from my house it's a very yeah, nice well, venue yeah. yeah so um yeah cool company red rock um 
absolutely awesome staff that like taught me a heap of stuff. Like as I said, my fiance Sarah, she actually introduced me to cocktails from that, and I was just fascinated. So basically, what happened was from that, I yeah, uh, I left hospitality for a short while, but and was uh, practicing my trade of being a plumber here in Australia, and that just um, so. Basically, the type of plumbing I did in Ireland was like hospitals, schools, prisons, all that sort of stuff. So it was more, oh, wow. more detailed stuff, whereas I was doing houses here, which houses is just like turn and burn. Like, how quick can you do it? So I was just not into this. So like where I'd be like with, the, with my tape measure out going, oh, like, is that like a perfect double bend of like 210 mil? They're just there. Going, Get the fucking thing in. <laughs> so like, stress out of my mind. Um, like I caught up for a while, but the money, like the money, so I was on twenty-two dollars an hour as a plumber, and I was on twenty-three dollars an hour as a bartender. And I was like, "I'm fuck this!" Like, I was like, as a bartender, I get given a meal, I get given a knockoff. I'm indoors, like I'm out, I'm out of the elements. And for anyone that's worked who hasn't worked in hospitality, if you are a guy or a girl that works in hospitality, especially a guy all the girls come to you because you're behind the bar. Like, it's this weird thing. You could be a zero or you could be a 10. The girls come to you. It's weird. So I was just like, why the fuck am I on these building sites? So I was just like, that's it. I'm going into hospitality. So I went back to hospitality. Um, we struggled, me and my fiance struggled with money for a while because we'd spent all the money on trying to get visas, paying for tools, paying for... Uh, all the school, like the night school that I was doing to try to like convert my plumbing skills over here to to Australian standards, and um, so like money was tight for a bit, but I uh, went back into hospitality. Absolutely loved it, but I was working for the competitor next door to Ludlow, which was at the time was World Bar. It's now Hopscotch, but it was oh, yeah. World Bar. Yeah, yeah, we know Hops- Hopscotch real. Yeah. So I could not get a job for love or money, and then I was like. Do you know what? I'll try World Bar Hopscotch. I go, I'll try it. And as soon as I walked in, one girl recognized me because she was like, oh, you used to work at Ludlow. And because of that, I got given the job straight away. And they were like, oh, you know how to do cocktails. You know how to do this. And like at the time, my knowledge I thought was like a lot, but it wasn't like, it was not It was not good. So um, you're like, uh, have you, you're like, have you ever heard of a Sonic Knuckles and Tails? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to change your world. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Saturday night, uh, I worked there on my trial shift. It was like the Sonic Knuckles and Tails. I made two cocktails the whole night. And I was like, fuck, I'm not getting this job. And as I was leaving, I uh, there was this French girl who was the bar supervisor, Beatrice, lovely girl. She was just like, before you leave, do you mind making me a coffee? And I was just like, yeah, 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 cool. I go, it's been six months. I have not made a coffee in six months. She's like, yeah, yeah, cool. So I done this like shit latte art. Like it wasn't great. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. I gave it to her. And she goes, like, and scurries over. And she's there talking with all the managers and they're looking at and they're looking at me. And looking at me. <laughs> it's they're the bat symbol. <laughs> <laughs> And she comes over, and this is so. This is on the Saturday, and she goes, "Do you want to come in tomorrow morning?" Like I know, like I know it's late, but will you come in tomorrow morning? And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, cool." So I came in the next morning, and I became the barista. Oh wow! <laughs> and I was like, I'd never, never been a barista before. So, but I became the barista of uh, World Bar, and uh, the Sunday we got slammed. Like it was, there was a forty-minute wait on coffee. Like that was the norm. It wasn't just me. And then my proud moment was I got that 40 minute wait down to 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Wow. From just like, a, uh, like just you, like using my sort of uh, intuition and all that sort of stuff. And then basically what happened was the new venue manager came in, saw this and we went out for a drink one night and he goes, would you ever open up your own place? I was like, nah, I have no fucking clue how to do that. Like, and he goes, he goes, look, I can go through the p and I can go, I can do this, I can show you this, I can show you that. I was just like, no, nah, I fucking I wouldn't be able to do that. So basically what happened was, I was just like, well, I know someone who is looking to like invest. I go like, I approached them, so I approached them 
And I said, look, listen, my venue manager wants to open up a bar with me. Are you interested? And they was just like, yeah, let's do it. So like we had a meeting, had like a few meetings, and then we went shopping around. And then next of all, we stumbled upon, it was then like a bar, which uh, had a bit of a bad reputation. Well, it had a good reputation, but the, uh, the behind the scenes things, I don't think were too good in the area. I don't want to say too much more. But uh, we were like, cool. Our goal was to always find a business that was sort of not doing well and then use our skills. Because like that Christmas just beforehand, like the money that we'd made and like looking after like your cost of goods and all that sort of stuff, we killed it. So we are like, we're doing it for someone else. It'd be easy to do it for ourselves. Little did we know, if you buy a business that sort of already got a bad reputation you're buying that bad reputation so it's like buying a car like if you buy a brand new car like it's got sort of you're paying a lot more money but you've got sort of you've got your guarantees you've got your warranties whereas if you buy a used car or a used venue it looks good from the outside but then you're driving down the road and the fucking gearbox all day like, <laughs> Shit, how much is this gonna cost? so um yeah, that's been the last four years because, like, the cool thing is um, that Ludlow place is uh, I worked with a guy called Johnny, who mm. uh, Dave worked with back in Liverpool. Yes. And from that, Dave walked into Ludlow in the early days when we had more staff than customers. <laughs> and uh, I had brown hair then as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh face to Australia. But yeah, that's and, uh, how we met. And then uh, from 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 there, like it, from the last four years, so that that was about four years ago that me and Dave met, and then um, from there, like it's literally been a, a grind to like try and promote us, like with us. My I'm passionate, like very 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 passionate about cocktails. Whereas my my whole aura on it is like, why not buy a twenty dollar drink? Like, because people will go out and spend twenty dollars easily on two vodka soda limes. But instead of doing that, you could spend twenty dollars and have a drink that you're like, "Wow, this is actually really, really enjoyable and really tasty." And then, on top of that, as well, is I love being around people when they experience that. Like the I was up in Townsville last Christmas, and uh, one of our last nights, myself, Dave, Elise, and Sarah, we went to Hooch and Fellow. So shout yes. out to John. Josh, the owner, but like, how good was that night that we were just ha- like, we had a lot to drink, like, we did have a lot to drink, and we spent a lot of money, but it was so enjoyable to be like, okay, well, what drink do you want next? Yeah. Even though, like, I wasn't making the drinks, I was able to suggest something to yourself and Elise, and then um, that was a really, really enjoyable night. Like, maybe we should have stopped before the last drink because I remember <laughs> walking home. <laughs> But that was a great that was a great bar, Hooch and Fellow. And he's he's doing some good things over there. I'd like to get yeah. him on one day, but he's that was a cool bar. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. That is that is something that always stood out um about you to me. Because the first time I ever met you, I was working for base backpackers and I wanted to get some extra money on the side. <clears throat> because I was going to going to leave for farm work, but I knew I only had about a month left, I think. I knew whatever, or a month and a bit, I knew whatever venue I said yes to, I was ultimately going to fuck them over. And a lot of venues are like, number one question for a backpacker community is like, how long are you staying around for? And if you say, I'm only here for a couple of weeks, the chances of you getting hired are none. So you normally tell a little white lie. So I went to a few venues and then, I got in touch with Johnny who I worked with back in England and Johnny was like, I was like, do you know anyone? And he was like, go see my mate James. I think he owns a bar now. I worked with him at Ludlow Bar. So I walk into your venue. I remember walking in, you're there, you were on your laptop and you looked very official. I did not know it was super early days for you. Anyway, you said, okay, how long are you stick around for? And I went, oh, uh, six months. And you went, right, okay, you can do a trial or whatever. And then I did, I think I did a trial for you. And then I remember just seeing how passionate and everything you were and what you were trying to create, what you were trying to do. And it was at that moment, I think the next, um, I think you offered me the job. I was like, look, I don't know much. Um, And you offered me the job. And then it was like, 
I went back and sat and thought about it. And I was like, he's a mate of a mate. And I, literally, he's so passionate about what he does. He cares about people. He cares. I don't know. I just got such a different vibe from you from other <clears throat> venues I've been to. And I was like, I can't, I can't screw this bloke over. And I think it was at that time I was like, look, I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer for you. I'm, I'm leaving actually a lot sooner for you. And I was like, but can you teach me about cocktails? And it was when you started teaching me about cocktails, I started helping out and stuff. But you started teaching me about cocktails. I was like, this is actually mind blowing the world of cocktails. And this was going to be one of my earlier questions is like, what defines as a cocktail? Because is it, is it just a spirit and a mixer or does it need more than that to become a cocktail? Because I know that day when you started teaching me cocktails, it was not just a spirit and a mixer. So much went into it. There was times you had to stir it the right amount, right portions. Well, did know. it have a party hat? It didn't you know? have a party hat. <clears throat> party hats it, it are essential. Um, Some of them have umbrellas, but... I didn't, yeah. I didn't want to follow you, JJ. Like, after you made that drink, I was like, shit, <laughs> hell do I follow yeah, it? Just can't do it. Can't do it. But, like, like, the art of cocktail and stuff like that, do you know much about it or what defines a cocktail or is there a rule to it? So the rule of thumb, um, the rule of thumb, there's, there's a better rule of thumb, but um, the rule of thumb, sorry, there's a funnier, better rule of thumb, but the rule of thumb is you need spirit, you need sugar, you need citrus, you need bitters, and you need water. But like water is the ice that you're stirring the drink with. So that's the five elements to make a cocktail. So if if you think about that, those five elements, a lemon lime bitters is technically a cocktail. There's alcohol really? in the bitters. There's alcohol in the bitters. So you've got your you've got your spirit. Well, I know it's not a spirit, but you've got your alcohol. You've got your citrus, you've got your ice, you've got your sugar, which is the lemonade, which mm. is, uh, yeah. Um, and then there's this thing, I don't know if you remember it, Sarah, off the top of your head. Sorry, I've got my fiance is just working away on the laptop here on the couch beside me. But um, there's this Peggy out of Mad Men. Uh, someone's drinking, I think, a, a Mountain Dew and like a vodka and Mountain Dew. Yeah. And she's like, that doesn't constitute as a cocktail. A cocktail needs three ingredients. I can't remember the. I'm, I'm after ruining the quote, but if you look up Peggy out of Mad Men, right? I'm going to look it up. You guys keep talking. I'll look it yeah, up. Yeah, like it's just it was just so funny because if you actually see her like say it like and just her sass, I think it's brilliant. Because then on the flip side of this is there's this bar in East Village in New York, and if anyone doesn't know about cocktails, New York City and London are the capitals of the world when it comes to cocktails. I'm going to say New York is probably a bit better. But London kind of has been around longer because they didn't have prohibition in England. But uh, there's, there's this place in East Village, which is like the bottom end of Manhattan, towards the Dead Rabbit, which is an Irish cocktail bar, which is another conversation in itself. And uh, all this guy does is just a morrow stirred down drinks, like so stuff like I'm drinking here. He doesn't shake any cocktails and he doesn't use citrus. But uh, I was like, I obviously follow him, like, uh, like you know, like I'm like looking at all the stuff on Instagram and all that, going, Oh, show me more, like, teach me more. <laughs> and he made this drink during the week, which is basically the same concept as this. So, like, this is a highball, you've got your alcohol, but he puts suz, which is basically like in layman's terms, like a, a white Campari, so like a, a French white bitter aperitif with Mountain Dew. <laughs> so he, he makes a cocktail with it and he's just like, that is actually damn good. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, Mountain Dew. And so so the, <laughs> the, quote, the quote is, you need three ingredients for a cocktail. Vodka and Mountain Dew is an emergency, is the quote. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it, that's it. Thank you, JJ, thank you. I love it. I love it when I think when we first started drinking and you remember shit mixes and you just throw anything into it and you're like, oh, it's a it's a cocktail. But there is I when I started uh, working for you and helping you out and all that, I I mean, up to that point and you said a quote earlier, much like 
How's this getting harder? I've been drinking all my life. I think that is a great quote. I, I want to catch raise that. That is amazing. But um, for me, it was very much the same. You were like, okay, do you know how to do this? No, I don't know how to do it. Do you know how to do this? No, I don't know how to do that. Do you know how to do this? Yeah, I know how to do it. Okay, do it. And then I'd do it. And then you'd be like, okay, you don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I realized, I realized how complex it is. And I completely agree with you. It is that is a great that is something you said to me at the beginning as well people will easily go out and spend 20 dollars on a cocktail and then but they'll also shy away from that because they're like oh i'm not paying 20 dollars for a cocktail but then we'll easily order two vodka soda limes which will come to 20 dollars in the next 10 to 20 minutes where you could sip yeah. on a, a cocktail for 10 to 20 minutes so you kind of really much in getting more enjoyment out of it um i think what confused me with all these and you mentioned it then with all these different alcohols. You've got bitters, you've got Campari's, you've got... Uh, well, the big thing you told me at the beginning was to do... You got me... You said my homework was to go away and figure out what a scotch... Uh, what was it? A whiskey, a scotch, and a bourbon, the difference was, or something like that. The, um, so, yeah, yeah. So, the diff- the di- so, basically, you've got whiskey is... So, people will be like... I don't drink bourbon. I only drink whiskey. And it's like, oh, but if you look at like the family tree, like um, whiskey is like the top and bourbon is under that umbrella. But people actually don't sometimes don't know that. So the uh, thing that I said to you, David, was um, go and learn about the different types of whiskey. So you've got like obviously Irish, Scotch, bur- like American, which then splits again. So you've got like, you've got rye, you've got bourbon. Yeah. You've got yeah. American whiskey. And then like there's different laws, like it's just there is there is a lot, a lot. I think to it. somewhere on my laptop, the lap very shitty laptop I'm using now, I think I've got notes from that actual homework session that I've never well, deleted. I'm pretty sure I have. But it was that little homework you sent me away to do. And I was like, I then realized at that moment that the world of alcohol is bloody vast. And your Pinot Grigio. Pinot Noir error that you've made is an error I made in my early days as well, where you think it's the same and it's completely not. But there are, you know, this is the, the alcohol trade. There are people that will spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on on this particular brand. And I think, didn't you have a special cab, cabinet or something where you had more exclusive? Yes. Yeah, like we have, we have the we have the higher end cabinet that has like sort of like the the weird and wonderful. They're like the more expensive stuff. Um, like our our focus is like whiskeys and and cocktails. Gin, gin is up there as well, but like for me, Scotch whiskey is just amazing. Like it's it's so complex. It's just. I love big belters like Isla whiskeys, like um, like Isla Sky, which is Talisker, which is the whiskey that introduced me to to whiskey, and that's actually a funny story as well. Like, I, if I can just go off topic yeah, for a go second, ahead, but, mate. but but essentially how I started drinking whiskey was until I came to Australia, all I drank was Jemison and lemonade, and as Irish people call it, it's called the Jemison and White. So uh, I'm working at PJ O'Brien's, which is part of Red Rock, who own Ludlow as well. I love a little bit of PJ's. Yeah. First, first time yeah. I ever get drunk in Australia, PJ O'Brien's. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, you guys know, so uh, as a backpacker you, on a working holiday visa, you can only do six months at a company. So I've done my six months at Ludlow, and then I got transferred then over to PJ O'Brien's. So still under Red Rock, but then I got moved to a new Red Rock venue. And then... Uh, Basically, I done the day shift, and that night they were doing this whiskey tasting because it was. I think it was in August. I think it could be August. JJ, are you like Jamie from the Joe Rogan podcast show? That I can be like JJ. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. What do you need me to do? I'll do it. I think World World Whiskey Day. I think it could be the twenty fourth of August. I, I could be wrong. World but, um, Whiskey Day. Let's World find whiskey. out when it is. It is definitely on a day. Uh, as. The third Saturday in May, Saturday the fifteenth of May. Okay, I was off by a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> Too much whiskey. Too Must much have whiskey. been the whiskey, yeah. 
but uh, so uh, I done the day shift and we had this whiskey night coming on and it was a ticketed event. And what I did was I knocked off and I saw how slammed the staff were getting and like the, the plumber, the tradie and me like kicked in like, I was just like, I can't just fucking walk away while these guys are fucking getting slammed. So I was just like, while I have my knockoff, I'll just polish the little small tasting glasses. And Aoife, the venue manager, comes up to me and goes, like, thank you, you didn't have to do that. As a thank you, go around and, and do a do a tasting, like, on me, like, you don't have to buy a ticket. And I was just like, oh, it's not really into Scott. I was like, fuck it, look, I'll try it. So, like, I'm drinking, like, McAllen's, like, which are, now I'm like, McAllen, I love McAllen, but back then I was there. So I'm drinking all these scotches going, oh, no, it's just not for me. And the guy who was doing the presentation, his name is Sean Baxter. He owns now his own brand of gin, which is called Never Never uh, Gin, mm-hmm. which okay. he uh, distills out of South Australia. So Sean is there, like, he's the brand ambassador for, for I can't remember, like, because there's different, like, McAllen is owned now by Spirits, Platform. Spirits platform, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Um, but but basically, like, so we're going through all these scotches, and then the second last one was Talisker 10 year old, which is you don't start off on Talisker 10 year old because it's a smoky whiskey. So I take a sip of this Talisker 10 year old, and I was like, What the fuck is that? That's lovely. <laughs> and he goes, Yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, He goes, You must be into like, Shiraz is like you love bold flavors like steaks and all that sort of stuff. And I was like, I go, mate, this is amazing. You should you should sell this. <laughs> we do sell that. We sell a lot of that. <laughs> I was like, well, I've never heard of it, you know. Talisker 10 year old. Like I, I probably was pronouncing it wrong back then and all that. So Talisker 10 year old is like literally like it has so much sentimental value to me. So I this like open my world into whiskey and then like I started then like reading into scotch whiskies like how how they're produced and then I just fell in love with the process so then I started drinking all these other whiskies and I didn't like them at first but then I'd read about it and then like try and like pick out the flavor profiles of it and I was like okay cool so now well sorry a better better example is probably 2014 2015 all my tips any spare money I have like I was in Dan Murphy's like buying another bottle of scotch and I was being like oh my God. <laughs> so I, when we went to move house I had something like 50 bottles and trying to move 50 bottles of booze is a pain in the hole so I was like all right cool I need to buy a bar I can't do this again <laughs> and then, there you go buy a bar <laughs> that's probably a great segue because the bar tell us about that so you were set, going back to an early point you came with a bad reputation but I remember you sit on the corner of the Esplanade just down from a very famous venue. Uh, we, won't, we won't mention that venue because you're famous in my eyes, baby cakes. Um, oh. But um, what's it been like owning St. Lucia? Because I, there's a, for me, as a very supportive customer of yours, there's a very distinctive difference from when I first met you to just before I came to Magnetic Island. And I know it's not been that easy for you. Would would you like to share that road for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, essentially, we saw this. So, hindsight is a great thing. So, I'm when I open up my bar, I'm only in hospitality four years. So, I've only worked at hospitality four years. I'm 27 years of age, which everyone knows like your the your frontal lobe doesn't fully develop until you're 25 so I'm only two years out of this so stupid <laughs> stupid age um and uh, we see this and myself and my business partner Luke we're just like well we have worked so hard the last year and a half for someone else and we like literally like we're looking at the PLs the process and loss going from when we started to now and it's like we've made so much money like we've improved this like we're on top of this so it's like this is gonna be a breeze so we get the bar it's got a bad name and then you realize 
it doesn't matter how good you are in this day and age at doing something. What matters is how you actually get your name out there. So we have no idea about marketing. And I know, Dave, you you promote like the since 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 we've been there, like the you promoted the venue, which is which currently resides at number one Fitzroy Street. And since since we've been there, there's been three different venues. Yeah, in, yeah. in, in nearly five years at that number one Fitzroy Street. The from number one to that corner tuck shop on Fitzroy Street is kind of like the forgotten end. Whereas if you go up to like where Freddie Wimpole's is and the Fifth Province, where the Woolworths and all that is, that intersection between Canterbury Road and Fitzroy Street is that's the buzz. Like that's where the you've got apartments, you've got people like everyone sort of conjugates there. And then as you go away from that, it gets quieter and quieter, and then. What we thought back then was, okay, there's no one beside us. There's no cocktail bars. So all you have to do is open up a cocktail bar and everyone's going to be like, yeah, cool. That's the only cocktail bar to go to. So we're going to go there. Being naive, I was just like, easy. Like, because when I go out, I go to drink cocktails. But what I didn't realize is like, cocktails is the thing that I love. Like, you know, that's the way, like, when I was, when I was a plumber, like, an, like an apprentice tradie, the thing was like nightclubs, you know, like the saving up our money and flying over to Liverpool or flying over to Manchester and getting like absolutely wasted. Like that was the thing back then. Whereas towards the end of my, like towards the end of my twenties, I was just like, oh yeah, I like going out and actually having a good drink. I just kind of assumed, and you should never assume that everyone else was sort of on that page. So the crowd that we got in at, at the first place was all these like fifty-five year olds. Was the was the was the average was the average age? We had a DJ on, and like the music was just like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> falling asleep at your own bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm there, like, like you know, I'd be making an old fashioned for someone, and I'm there, fucking, you know, in my element, going, "This guy has asked me about whiskey, and I'm making them an old fashioned." And then like get these two like sort of old boys coming up and going, "Why the fuck is that glass so big, mate?" And they're going. No. Oh, yeah, because I'm making an old fashioned and they just couldn't comprehend. They're like, Oh, we're too old to drink cocktails. And it's like, Cocktails have been around since 1806. So I don't think you're too old. Like, you are <laughs> old as dust. You are old as dust, but you're not that old, you know. Um, so, like, it was kind of, we had these people coming in for the cocktails, these fucking idiots coming in just wanting their um, whatever they wanted, but they were just these old men that would just stare at the women and then the women would feel uncomfortable and leave so then you're ending up with this room with 55 year old men and you're there going complain about glasses too big <laughs> yeah, and then they're going, I've made it I've made it <laughs> so they're going, fuck so, oh my god just because we're running kind of slightly out of time and I think it'd be good to actually have you back on at a later date we just want to try and keep it within our, our time frame we've got obviously a big announcement that happened this week um we've got everything opening back up which is very exciting uh what is your outlook on that are you excited about it um if, what troubles do you see lying ahead things like that so the big thing is for me right now i've lost all my staff front of house to jb hi-fi woolworth stan murphy's because if we do go into a lockdown again that is essential service mm -hmm. Um, which is fair enough because these people have they've got their own bills to pay they've got rent to pay some of them have mortgages to pay 100% so they don't want to come back to hospitality then my chef unfortunately is dealing with rheumatoid arthritis so he's still on the mend so I don't have him in the kitchen and our 2IC in the kitchen Ah, well I conveniently she, have a friend who was looking for a chef and job today so I'll talk to you about that after this <laughs> yeah awesome awesome <laughs> So our other chef is up in Darwin because her her other half he he he's from Darwin so they're up there because they're fr they're free they're more free than Victorians. So essentially, what's going to happen now is this week is I'm going to be by myself. So I'm going to make get a sandwich press. So I'm going to be doing sandwiches like sort of like gourmet toasties with the cocktail. So like the food offering isn't going to be a la carte like we did before. It's going to be more snacky foods, but then mm -hmm. the focus is going to shift completely to the drinks. 
And I hope that I've picked up enough of a following from the lockdowns because we've done like at home master classes and all this Which stuff. Which I did want. I did want to bring up a very good. I mean, out of all the venues, you took on COVID by the bloody horns, mate. And it's been it's been tough for most hospitality mm. venues. But yeah, you were doing these at home cocktail making classes and which were fantastic. Fantastic, by the way. Yeah, I, I stole the idea from HelloFresh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hello Sesh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Shit, JJ. I like it. I like it. God damn, I'm gonna steal that one. <laughs> hello, hello sesh. <laughs> hello sesh. Great name. <laughs> um but yeah, you did you did that and then you did your own little um meal kits as well, which I thought was amazing. We done that, yeah. We done that in the first lockdown. We didn't do it so much uh the last lockdown just going because our, our chef is like he's trying to get his health back in line because like anyone that's worked in the kitchen or worked in hospitality like you, you literally you're doing stupid hours the money is not great you're doing it for passion and like it, it, it catches up on people you know that's why so unfortunately our, our chef he he's doing his best to get back on top of his health so he's out of, he's going to help like put together like the food menu and all that sort of stuff but he can't physically do like a 15 hour shift on his feet and all that sort of stuff yeah. which is which is uh, like sad so like yeah it's going to be interesting but like it's we can only have 20 people inside so for myself i'll be able to, to manage that because last year like we were doing like 80 people and i was making the drinks for 80 people and we had staff then looking at the floor so i'll be okay in that sort of sense but for the rest of hospitality in victoria JJ, we spoke on this before the podcast is like there's gonna be this false economy that everyone has their money saved, so they're gonna and they want to be out. So the end of this month, November, December, everyone's gonna be spending, and then next year, like January, February, we, apparently we will get St. Kilda Fest again. And then yes. after that, everyone will sort of have spent their money and then go. Well, we're not going to go into a lockdown again, so we're fine. Like that, that venue is going to be there next week. But that's not what that's not what's going to happen. Like we could go into another lockdown again, and then if people aren't spending, like the venues are going to sort of go like plateau, and then realize going, okay, shit, we're not getting X amount of money in the bank like we thought we like we were the last three months. It's like okay, we're not going to be able to afford X amount of staff members. We have to think about rent think about paying back the bank loans um so i don't think we're going to feel like so say if we hypothetically if we don't go into lockdown for the next 12 months i reckon it's going to be into the second quarter of next year that you'll see which venues are going to be able to survive from the actual financial strain so it's going to be pretty interesting like you've got some companies like the bigger companies that they'll be fine but uh, the smaller fellas are going to struggle I'm semi lucky if you think of it this way. It's just that I don't have any staff to pay. I just have to pay myself. Yeah. So I can survive kind of longer than other people. Whereas if you've got someone, say, in my position that they don't actually work in the venue and they're trying to pay like two or three staff members, like 60 to 80 grand a year, like multiplied by three, but then people aren't coming in and spending. And then you've got, your um, sixty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollar rents a year, so it's it's going to be interesting. My fear is that like the bigger companies, you go into one of the one of their venues and you see the same taps. So like if you're into those tap beers, like it's good for you. And then you go into another venue and it's the exact same setup because they've got all these contracts. The likes of myself, I love tasting craft beer from a small independent brewery i love got like so up in townsville tiny mountain i yeah. was blown away i was blown yeah, away but i absolutely loved it so you're not going to be able to find tiny mountain brewery anywhere in victoria because all the places that are left open are going to be under contract and then people will turn around in the next two years and be like I'd love like someone that could make a really good cocktail. Where are all the cocktail bars? And they'll all be gone. Unless like people consistently 
support our local, you know, that's what we're like, you know, that whole hashtag support your local, like, yeah. it's, it's great, it's so it's great true. but it can, it can fall off as well, like, you know. I don't mean to be a pessimist. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, it is, and hospitality has been an industry that has been hit very, very hard compared, I mean, everyone's been hit hard by COVID, but hospitality's really had a kick in the balls. Um, Look, mate, the fact that you've managed to uh, stand the test of time, you know, that area of Fitzroy Street does have a lot of bars popping up and disappearing, but you've been there consistently. I think that is a, a testament to yourself and your staff and your business partner, Luke. Uh, you, you're doing great things, and that's that's why you're still around as well, the hard work you put in and everything. And, you know, if you are listening to this, I do strongly recommend you uh, you go out and see James at St. Luger. James, uh, I think I might see you on Friday, mate. I think I might come <laughs> down and give you a little oh, visit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, it's a great venue, and I do strongly recommend it because it's venues like James just highlighted there, and it's venues like this that need your help because once they're gone, you're just going to be served the same shit everywhere else. So, uh yeah, you need to get down and get the good stuff, get something where you pay a bit of money and feel special walking out of there, you know? Um, yeah. Is there anything? I think we've got that. Um, <laughs> is there anything you wanna you want to add, James? Or well, I, you know, you know me, I could literally I could talk for hours on cocktails and any questions that uh, you guys have and I know you're under sort of time constraints I would absolutely love to come back on the show again another day uh, we'll get you back on mate not a problem I love what you're doing so I'm 50 days off the beer now and I'm aiming for 66 so if we can do another thing in 17 days or after I'll be able to have a beer with you boys we fantastic can, That'd we be can lovely. do that, that mate yeah well hopefully Isaac will be there at some point he's off gallivanting around Australia at the minute but yeah no it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on mate you're a very fascinating bloke and you've came from you know working in Ludlow Bar to what you're doing now it's it's absolutely incredible so thank you very much mate and um mm -hmm. We'll be plugging this one and showing you our full support as well. Uh, I'm just gutted I can't get to the bar myself, mate. Um, but I'll Dirk be... doesn't love you enough. That's the problem, yeah, James. Yeah. Doesn't want to go on a flight to come down here <laughs> to see you. That's not love. <laughs> well, actually, you know actually, in February, I am coming to Melbourne. So, you know, save the date and all that. So, uh, but yeah, um, mate, I wish you the best of luck with the opening again. And I'm sure you'll smash it uh, and keep your head up high. Thank you, mate. Yeah, well, um, I'll, yeah, I guess this is, uh, but just stay on after I end the recording, James, because I got a couple of things to ask you. But um, at the moment, it's uh, goodbye from me. Thank you very much for listening. And, James, thank you for being such an interesting and our first Irish guest. That's yeah. nice, isn't whoa, it? Whoa, 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 whoa. So. Yeah. I've got a joke a Scotsman and an Englishman and an Irishman walk into a free schooners podcast. <laughs> right, and with that, it's the end of the show. <laughs> uh, thank you again, uh, everyone, for listening. I think you'll all agree with me that, that James has got quite a lovely voice to listen to, first of all. Very easy voice to listen to. Great. So dreamy. All about that. Uh, some really good stories, and hopefully we can have him back on again soon. Awesome. Thank you, and boys. Much appreciated. And it's a goodbye from me, guys. Uh, thank you once again for listening. Uh, to the Free Schooners podcast. Thank you, James. Over and out.